right now on Sunrise. The first shipments of Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine are on the move across the country. It feels like there's finally a beginning to the end of this. As we wait for the vaccine, lawmakers are debating help from Minnesota businesses. Plus, when we can expect to see that big announcement on restrictions from Governor Walz. Watch out for a few slick spots this morning. Sunshine on the way. Things feeling a lot like winter. I'm tracking the coldest air of the season in the seven day. Stepping into another person's shoes virtually. How Jules Porter is using video games to shift conversations in our community. And the battle for the axe is not over just yet. When we could finally see the border battle between the Gophers and Badgers this season. It's Monday, December 14th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Good morning. Here's another reminder to take it slow these winter months. Check out all these crashes from the snow yesterday. State Patrol says 217 accidents were reported across the state. Two of those crashes were deadly. We're live in Mobile 11 this morning, checking on the conditions for you. You can see things look pretty dry on the roads. No snow coming down in that area right now, but there could be some slick spots, especially on bridges and overpasses. Let's see what that weather holds for us this Monday. Guys, that snow coming back anytime soon. Yeah, you know, not anytime soon. And the good news is we're not seeing any widespread snow right now. Uh, so the little bit of lingering snow showers we are seeing that will continue to dissipate and track off to the south and east. And we'll see some sun sunshine by sunrise, but the cold temperatures you'll notice temperatures right now in the teens. Some areas are seeing below uh, zero temperatures as you look far north. Most of us in the metro are in the teens, though, but feel like temperatures. This is the story feels like single digits. Five below is the feel like temperature in Mankato 22 below in Bemidji. Highs today will be in the low 20s. Sunshine on the way. Another cold night ahead. I'll have more coming up. All right, thanks, Guy. And unlike yesterday with all of those crashes, we are off to a good start this morning. This is 394 at, at Plymouth Road, uh, just in the west part of the metro. But coming up, we'll show you what roads look like elsewhere in just a little bit. Thanks, Kaya. The U.S. holding on to hope as COVID-19 vaccines are distributed throughout the country this week. Pfizer's vaccine got the green light from the FDA on Friday. This historic moment comes as Minnesota lawmakers prepare for yet another special session and a big decision on business restrictions is looming. We have team coverage this morning. We have Gordon in front of the legislature and we have Kaya tracking things. Let's get to you, Kaya. You're telling us where this vaccine stands right now. Chris, the Minnesota Department of Health says the first shipments of the vaccine should be arriving at hospitals in our state today and deliveries should continue throughout the week. This comes after the FDA on Friday approved the Pfizer vaccine. Now nationwide, more than 600 facilities are expecting deliveries today, but it could take a little more time before anyone gets the vaccine. Governor Tim Walz says in Minnesota, more than 180,000 doses could be available by the end of the year. Those are for people identified, of course, in phase one frontline health care workers. In the meantime, beginning today, providers will be trained on how to administer the vaccine. Minnesota Department of Health says vaccinations can start as soon as training is complete. So it's looking like there will be a major developments over the next couple of weeks as 2020 comes to a close. And that has us thinking, what is the first thing that you want to do when things get back to normal or as normal as we can be post pandemic? Text us 763-797-7215 and we'll read your answers in just a little bit, Chris. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a big meal with some friends. At a restaurant. At a restaurant. Or even in your house. We're not really supposed to do that now, too. So. Well, that's true, but I want to go to a restaurant. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> All right, thanks, Kaya. <laughs> yeah. Well, meanwhile, lawmakers will head to the state capitol for another special session. Gordon is live with a preview of what they're looking to get done today. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Chris. This will be the seventh special session since the pandemic started, and this one is all about giving some business owners and their employees some relief during this difficult time. The session will officially kick off around three o'clock this afternoon, and there is some agreement going in between both of the political parties. They have mostly agreed upon uh, giving business owners more than $215 million. About half of that would go to bars, restaurants, and gyms that lost more than 30% of 
their business. The other half or so would go to counties that would then distribute that money to businesses that need it the most. And a small chunk would also go to theaters and convention centers. But a growing number of business owners have simply had enough. More than 100 or so are planning to reopen later this week, despite the governor's ongoing restrictions. We're not demanding that you come into our restaurants. Or we're not demanding that you go into the gyms. We're asking for the right for you to be able to come in. We know COVID is real and COVID is deadly in uh, certain cases, and but we also know that the COVID lockdown is deadly in certain cases. So can we find a, a middle ground? These restrictions that are currently in place right now are set to expire on Friday. Governor Wall says that he will decide on Wednesday whether he will extend them or let business go back to normal. Now, previously, he did say that there will be at least some limitations moving forward, given the amount of community spread that we're seeing right now. But we'll have to wait to Wednesday to find out exactly what these restrictions will look like. Chris, back to you. Well, many businesses in dire need of aid right now. Thanks, Gordon. All this as the virus continues to take lives here in Minnesota. Sunday, the State Department of Health reported 85 new deaths from COVID-19. Since last Monday, 460 people have died from it in our state. 3,400 new cases were reported Sunday. In Wisconsin, COVID-19 took the lives of another 15 people, but the state did report some good news. The number of new cases went down Sunday to 2,700. That's lower than Saturday's total of just over 4,000. Taking you live now from the White House as President Trump waits a decision from the Electoral College. It's meeting today to certify election results. They're expected to officially name Joe Biden the next president of the United States. President Trump still has not conceded to the race and is threatening more lawsuits despite many courts dismissing the cases. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. A man involved in a shootout with Brooklyn Park Police is due in court today. Police say it started when they were questioning a man about a domestic situation. The man allegedly reached into his car, pulled out a gun and pointed it at officers. Both sides opened fire. The man and police officer were hit. Both are expected to be okay. Stay off the ice. That's a message from the Hennepin County Sheriff who says the ice is just too thin right now. The warning comes after two rescues with in a week, the DNR says ice needs to be four inches thick to be walkable. The battle for Paul Bunyan's axe will happen after all. For the 130th time, the Gophers and the Badgers will duke it out on the gridiron. The game was canceled a few weeks ago because of a COVID outbreak. Kickoff is set for Saturday afternoon in Madison. And that's your Monday Morning Rush. Guy, what's one thing weather this Monday? Yeah, cold school day forecast on the way. Already 13 by later this morning. Still in the teens by noon. Highs today will be in the low 20s. All right, thanks, Guy. And your one thing traffic is that we are looking good this Monday morning after yesterday's uh, snow and the crashes that we had. So we're off to a good start, and let's keep it that way, you guys. Time to connect the dots where we make sense of the headlines. An alarming new study shows why it's important to follow COVID safety guidelines when you're inside. Let's connect the dots. New research shows just how easily coronavirus can spread indoors and the results are an important warning. Let's connect the dots. This research comes out of South Korea, a country that has instituted strong contact tracing using cell phone and credit card data. When a case popped up in a region that had not had a coronavirus case in two months, researchers got to work. What they found is the girl was infected at a restaurant. She was exposed to an infected traveler from 20 feet away for five minutes. That's concerning because up until now, the guidance has been to stay six feet apart and limit exposure to 15 minutes. So how did it spread that far? According to the research published in the Journal of Korean Medical Science, researchers went back to the security footage from the restaurant. They found the girl never spoke to the infected traveler and did not touch any of the same surfaces. But they could tell the air conditioner was blowing from a swaying light fixture. The team then recreated the conditions in the restaurant, measuring the airflow. They found that diners with their back to the airflow were not infected while those facing it were even at those long distances. Another reminder that this is a new virus and we are still learning just how dangerous it is. 
Scary moments after a Florida State basketball player collapses on the court. We have an update on his condition. There are a few simple steps to up your money game. Things you should do to save money right now and even make some more down the road. Translating real life to online. How Jules Porter is helping us find compassion for our neighbors in a video game.